going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, please like and subscribe if you do like what you're listening to. Please inform your friends and family and spread all over social media. It is imperative that we get back to learning finances and understand how the world really works. Because once we understand how the world really works, we understand that it is all planned out. Now, I want to thank those who purchased the books, Crypto Teacher and the New World Order Book. Remember, those books are mandatory because they show you how the world really works. Also, those who purchased the Three Kids books, it's time to re-educate. And also, those who donate to the Cash Shop, Patreon, much love, keep it coming. And also, those who are shopping at both stores, much love, keep it coming. The market is slightly down, but like I stated, guys, we're definitely going to start creeping up. And then plus, guys, we know on the weekend we're the only game in town. Now, right now, the topic is El Salvador. And we just got the news yesterday of the SEC and Coinbase, and I'm going to go over that later. But in El Salvador, merchants must process those Bitcoin payments. Of course, it's considered legal tender, so they must process it. Now, they have a choice of whether they want to keep it or move over to the USDC once they cash out. But we know and we can see that El Salvador is just a testing ground and a narrative that the New World Order is going to use. And I'm going to get into that later also in the CNBC video I'm going to let you listen to. Now, guys, make sure you're paying attention to the actual indicators. You have your volume, you have your tether, you have your USDC. And guys, you can clearly see this chart where all the cryptos go down at the same time. You can look at this chart that I have up here of the actual cryptos, and they basically have the same chart. The reason why, it's an algorithm. It's all manipulated, and I'm going to go over that at the end also, just like I stated with the CNBC video. But guys, don't forget about the Fed. They're doing the $1 trillion per day. And then also, guys, we have Grayscale that well. Yesterday, they pulled back some assets. So guys... Make sure you're paying attention. Like I stated, it swings the market. We are in the most manipulated market in history. This is the greatest transfer of wealth, and it's done right in front of your face. They know the masses do not care about finance. They are asleep. They are distracted by things that do not matter. And then also, guys, do not forget we have back next week. That's going to be very, very important because a few days later, we have the Fed speaking, and we have to make sure that we're listening to that speech, but you know I'm going to bring it to you. And we have institutional investors have dominated the DeFi scene, and we know the reason why, because DeFi is the new banking, and when Brian Brooks stated that, that couldn't be more from the truth. Now, guys, we have the SEC threatens to sue Coinbase over a crypto yield program, and then also, don't give them a reason. And guys, that makes no sense whatsoever. We know Coinbase has been working with the central banks. We know USDC is basically Goldman Sachs has been working with the central banks. They were moving USDC to Venezuela, guys. Come on now. And we know Brian Armstrong recently met with Jerome Powell. 
So they're going to keep this movie going on because, guys, they're going to definitely pull this rug. They have the El Salvador. They have the SEC with Coinbase, Uniswap being threatened, Ripple, Binance. So they have enough narratives on the crypto side. We know on the legacy side, guys, with stocks, they have the C word, the hacking, the climate change agenda. So the New World Order has the narratives and enough distractions to distract the people so therefore, we know behind the curtain, they're moving the money. So therefore, they can build this fourth industrial revolution. Now, guys, we're going to get over into a little crypto news. We had Charles Hoskins say from Cardano that more countries will follow the Bitcoin move. I don't see that happening because, guys, we know that when it comes to stable coins, stable coins are the foundation, not Bitcoin or any other crypto. Stable coins are the foundation because governments are still going to keep control of their currency. And I'm going to go over a video with that later with Mike Novogratz clearly explained that. And he definitely told the truth on that. Now we have Rob Gronkowski enters in the crypto, becomes an ambassador role with Voyager Digital. So guys, we know how they bring the puppets in to move the masses. Now we have Afterpay tells Senate inquiry crypto could slash merchant payment costs. And we know for a fact that is going to happen. But you're only going to have big banks left. Only a few banks that are going to be left in this new digital economy. Small banks are not going to be able to survive. That's the reason why Brian Brooks tried to sneak in rules before he left. Now, McDonald's now accepts Bitcoin, but only in El Salvador. And we have the Republic of Panama introduces bill for regulating crypto. And we know ISO is coming in November. That is the global regulation. And we have all these countries starting to bring in regulation because this is a global agenda. And lastly, guys, I'll leave you with this CNBC video. And basically, it speaks about the Bitcoin crash, stating that Coinbase went offline. That's the reason, guys, we know the Fed never says, I took your money. The crypto market is the most manipulated market we've ever seen. Goes up all together, comes down majority of times all together. So we see the graph and you see all these cryptos going down. It has nothing to do with the exchange, but that's what they reported on CNBC. Instead of telling the truth, it's manipulation. And we received that from the New York Attorney General saying all the manipulation that they saw. And then also they speak about El Salvador. Even if everybody started using it, it still would not affect the Bitcoin price. So we know El Salvador is a testing ground for a bigger agenda. We just have to sit back and watch the narrative. But guys, we have a lot of movies going on because we know when it comes to the New World Order, it is definitely all planned out. And never forget, TV is your reality and your life is an illusion. But that's all I have for you. Don't forget about the books, Crypto Teacher and the New World Order book. Also, the three kids books. It's time to re-educate. Also, if you know cryptos, Coinbase, BitChu, Binance, do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. Also, the Crypto Teacher Stock Channel, Crypto Teacher Stocks. You have your Cobo, your Chip Stocks, your Banking, your Gaming, while everybody's sitting at home, got that home stocks to see where the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing they were still getting that free money, what are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and y'all have a wonderful day. Welcome back to Fast Money. We've got a Bitcoin alert, the cryptocurrency collapsing today. Right now, it's down more than 10%. This big move lower, testing Coinbase, which reported service issues today. Let's get to Eamon Javers, who has been tracking the very latest on this. Eamon. Yeah, Melissa, Coinbase told us earlier in the day that they did have some problems related to volume. They said, though, that that was cleared up at about 1.40 p.m. East Coast time. Here's the tweet that they put out explaining what had happened. They said, Transactions are now going through normally and service issues have been resolved. We've taken steps on our end to maintain stability and keep our services up. Thank you for your patience and understanding while we worked to address this. So what happened here to cause all this? Well, here's the explanation officially from Coinbase. They say a sudden increase in network traffic and market activity led to a degradation in our services. We're seeing improvement with our app services. However, transaction services are still degraded. Fund settlement will be delayed while we recover. So not a clear answer in terms of a lot of detail of what exactly happened here, but they're saying 
simply volume was the problem here. So uh, clearly a lot of interest in Bitcoin today and other cryptocurrencies as we saw what happened in the uh, overall crypto market today. And then there you see uh, Coinbase's stock price itself taking a hit as a result of some of these issues they had today. They do say, Melissa, they've now got it worked out and things should be getting back to normal uh, before too long. We'll see overnight and into tomorrow morning how that actually plays out. All right, Eamon, thank you. Eamon Javers tracking this for us. Meantime, the big breakdown in Bitcoin comes as El Salvador becomes the first country to adopt the cryptocurrency as legal tender. Let's bring in our own Brian Kelly. He joins us on the fast line. Um, Beeks, thanks for joining us. What's your take on, on the decline we've seen? Yeah, so, I mean, I hate to keep saying this, but it is somewhat normal to, to what happens in Bitcoin. And what we saw today was really similar to what happened in May, where you get this cascade effect as stop orders are hit. So we had about... $3 billion worth of stop orders get hit and liquidated uh, in a relatively short period of time. That did coincide with some tweets from the president of El Salvador as well as some comments from the IMF. So I think what happened is people got spooked, stops were triggered, and we just cascaded lower. What role did the Coinbase uh, difficulties, outages, whatever you want to call it, play in this, if any? Yeah, so the, all the exchanges actually had issues. When you get that big rush, the exchanges just aren't at the point where they can scale out. So what does it do? It, it creates that vacuum so that on the initial downdraft, there's no buyers there, and then you got to wait till they come, wait till the exchanges come back up before you can get money back in and start buying again. And we're starting to see that now. How big of a deal is El Salvador? I, mean, I understand the symbolic nature of it, but polls show that people in El Salvador are very skeptical of using Bitcoin. So even if this happens and remittances are, what, 23 percent of its GDP and mostly remittances from the United States, that, that there, might, it, there might be slow adoption, even with this adoption as legal tender. Yeah, I think, you know, listen, even if everybody in El Salvador decided that they wanted to use Bitcoin, um, you know, it probably wouldn't have that much of an effect. It's a sentiment effect, right? And now you've got to think about the other countries that may start using this in South America. Um, you know, you might see somebody, the, the big one would be Brazil if they happen to have a currency breakdown. So it's more about, hey, we're giving this a shot. This is going to be kind of the trial run and everybody else around the world looking at it. That would be the bullish case. At the same time, People may not use it in El Salvador. Yeah. Um, down 11 percent right now, BK. I mean, a baller like yourself, this is probably not a buying opportunity per se, given that you say this is sort of run-of-the-mill you know, trading action. Yeah, I think this is a buying opportunity. There's, there's okay. nothing about the fundamentals that have um, changed, in my view. We're still seeing a lot of institutional adoption. Uh, we're still seeing money printing around the world. So this, to me, is a, is a buying opportunity. Exchange have difficulties. I mean, it seems like that's the kind of day that the exchange needs to actually be functioning without a problem. Yeah, extreme volume should be days that they wish for, right? And it shouldn't be a problem. And, and I thought it was really interesting that the stock didn't sell off more than it did. It just speaks to the fact that, you know, Coinbase is not going anywhere. It's here to The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Go to China.
it's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.